These are the plaintiffs, Tracy Turner and Stephen Knox. Tracy says they rented an apartment from the defendant, and soon after they moved in, the building inspector condemned the place. The defendant's mess cost them a whole lot of time and aggravation. They were forced to move again, and they want every penny of the $4,650.85 they're owed returned. This is the defendant, Rufino Medina. He says he purchased a three-apartment building and rented the finished first-floor apartment to the plaintiffs while he renovated the second- and third-floor apartments. Then, out of the blue, the plaintiffs moved out without even telling him, and there was a condemnation notice on the building. Apparently, the plaintiffs complained to the building department. They did an on-site inspection, only looked at the second- and third floors, and condemned the whole building. Now, a year later, he's being sued over a building department misunderstanding police. He's accused of renting out a wreck. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court next case. In the docket, the plaintiffs say they rented an apartment from the defendant. It was promptly condemned, and they can't get their security back. But the defendant says the plaintiffs bailed after they were the ones who got the building wrongly condemned. It's the case of welcome to condemnation. Thank you, Douglas. Tracy Turner and Stephen Knox, you are suing your former landlords, Rufino Medina and Wanda Medina. You're representing both of you here today? I am, Your Honor. For $4,650.85 in the return of your deposit, double the deposit, because according to you, they've violated Connecticut law, as well as uh, numerous expenses that you incurred in moving out. Tell me what happened. Um, we found the apartment, um, I believe it was on Craigslist, and we met with Mr. Medina, and we were scheduled to move in. Uh, moved in two weeks early. Did they early. prorate the rent for those two weeks? Did you pay rent those two weeks? I don't remember. They did not, Your Honor. Okay, go on. Um, so we were scheduled to move in. Uh, we were told the apartment would be ready. Got to the apartment, walked in, and found that uh, Mr. Medina was in the dining room with a skill saw or some sort of saw, sawing wood, and there was sawdust everywhere. There was dirt everywhere, dirt marks on the Had walls. Had you been told, listen, you're moving in two weeks early. That's a freebie for you because you're not paying rent. Mm -hmm. So understand I'm still working there, or you had not been told that? No, as far as I knew, it was going to be ready. That's why I was going in two but weeks early. But your lease date is two weeks later. Yep. Why were you letting the tenant move in two well, weeks early? I, I, when I met with them, I indicated to them that it was a process that was going on, that the apartment was ready to be moved into. I had some finishing touches to do, hence me letting them move in two weeks earlier. I allowed them to have the utilities, which was the light bill, still in my name until I was done because I was going to be using power equipment. Um, How long did you keep the light bill in your name? I, don't, I do not believe they ever put the light in their name. I could be mistaken, but I do not did believe. Did you ever put the light bill yes. in your name? When? Um, I'd have to look at my. How many months did he pay your light bill? I think it was only for the first month because we were only okay. there for two months. Okay, and then if you're still working on it, wouldn't it be better to just have them come in when they start paying rent instead of well, two weeks early? at the time, the two had come to an agreement that they wanted to take this venture on, and they, they were in accord with me. All right, and what happened? Um, we moved in. Um, there was a huge list of problems that we had. Um, when I moved in, or when we moved in, there was no heat. Um, there was no smoke detectors, no CO2 detectors. The gas line to the stove wasn't hooked up. The stove wasn't working. Come to find out there was some gas leaks um, coming from the pipe that led to the dryer. Um, there was numerous other issues, such as exposed wires in the first floor apartment. Um, the sewer pipe was uncapped as well. Um, boiler What evidence do you have of the things that you're saying? Do you have like letters or emails or texts that you sent him talking um, about the problems? Or? I have emails. Um, I have pictures of what the whole apartment looked like. Um, yeah, but the pictures weren't taken until after everything hits the fan and they don't, you, and you're leaving, right? No, they were taken prior to that. You said you have emails. Let me see the emails. And what happened? Does he take care of the issues? <clears throat> no. Um, basically, um, we had Connecticut Gas come in. They said that there was some leaks. Um, I have proof of that as well. May I see that? Yes. How did you know there were leaks? Were you smelling it? We had oil heat, and when they came in to fill the tank and light the burner, that's when the oil guy noticed that the exhaust for the, the furnace was improperly installed. 
Well, that's a different issue than what she's talking about. Yeah. So that's, how that's is That's what she's talking about, the gas leak, is that the fumes from the furnace was actually coming into the first floor apartment. And what evidence do you have of that? This was the notice from Connecticut Gas that there was a leak in the basement. Okay. Um, there was also, like I said, a leak from the uh, gas line to the dryer. So go on. Um, and that, I, that's why we had called, because we had a gas stove. And you can also see that um, the gentleman who came to fill the oil tank said that the boiler unit was unsafe. Did you ever have to change a boiler? Uh, no, I did not have to change the boiler. You lived there how long? Two months. Oh, just two months? Just two months. Okay, why did you move out? Um, the building inspector condemned the place. Um, I had asked Mr. Rufino to try and correct some of these problems. Um, and after fighting with him for two months, um, I said, look, you know, especially the sewer cap issue and the gas leaks and things like that. Um, I have liver disease and that's toxic. And I explained that as well. And the building inspector actually condemned the place. I finally called him Maybe and said- Did the building inspector condemn your place? The whole house. Can I see the condemnation? Mr. Medina, yes. according to them, they lived there for two months, couldn't take it anymore. There were a million problems and you didn't address them. Let me hear from you. Okay, I, I wouldn't say exactly a million. It's a slight stretch. Um, first and foremost, they never had oil because you can turn on the heat because there was no baseboard. Why wasn't there heat, I guess? The punch list that she had given me, it was increasing itemized on a daily. Every time she would want something, I would address it. They'd want something more. I uh, told me she wanted a cat. When she moved in, we put her on the lease. I moved in, to, I, I go to visit, the cat turned into a dog. So the building gets condemned, no heat, this and that. Uh, can the landlord, uh, can the tenants get their security deposit back? Absolutely, yeah. They, why? Why, because they're not breaking the lease on their, their own, the, the apartment building's breaking the lease. What if they were the ones who called building and safety to get it condemned and then they benefit from it? Yeah, I say you got to get out of Dodge at that point. They're not coming through with what they're delivering, so you got to get your. Do you get your money back? I say you do. You get you get your stuff and you get out of Dodge. Fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. When she brought up the, the the fact that there was a leak in the apartment, there was not a leak in the apartment. She had access to the basement. She went through the basement and through all the utilities of the whole, mind you, the three units there, with a you know with a uh, a fine tooth comb uh, because her, of her liver disease, and. Um, when she said there was a leak, the next day, I mean, I have, I have the receipt there. What did you do the next day? Go ahead, I don't spit know if it, it out. In, I, would, I don't know if it was the next day, but I did, call, I did a call plumber. I had him go through it, and I had him take care of everything that had to be fixed. Uh, first floor Let me fixed. see the bill from the plumber. No, hand it to my bailiff. So go on. Um, before they moved in, I have the receipt from the deposit. I was kind enough to let them pay the deposit in increments. They only had 650 at the time. So I, I was kind enough to bend. I, I didn't break, but uh, I bent, and I think they took advantage of my kindness. Um, Tell me the work that you did in the two months before you come to the apartment to do work and see a condemnation tag. I, you had the plumber. I can yes, see the receipt I, for that. I did the plumbing. She wanted a new refrigerator because her ice cream was soft, so I had to get her a new refrigerator, made sure it matched the color of the new range because she liked to bake. Uh, it wasn't a closet. It was just a cubby. It was a cubby. She wanted me to put a door over the cubby so she didn't look at her groceries. So I installed that. I think I was putting up molding, just trim mold, decorative mold. I think I didn't have time enough to fix the heat, to fix, the, to install the baseboard. But by the time I really was gonna address the more important parts is, uh, is when she broke the lease, when she walked away. All right, so you decide that you, you are not gonna continue to live there. Mm -hmm. And you tell him that when? It was right before um, she got in touch with When do you call a building inspector? about a week prior. It took him about a week to write the report. Okay. The date it was assigned was June 4th. Did he look at your apartment? Yes, he did. You, you've read the report, right? Yes. Do you know he's not condemning your apartment? So apparently he looked at your apartment and didn't condemn it because what he condemned was a second and third for this specific reason. I know that's not being rented, but I want to make sure it doesn't get rented until these things get fixed. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, he did find like loose railings outside and some issues in the basement but they have to do with electrical fixtures, not with sewer things that you're complaining about. So he actually looked at your apartment and did not condemn your apartment. Okay. Well, I, I didn't know that. Well, don't um, you see it? It's right a, here. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because you're very savvy. You called them to come in and mm -hmm. give you a reason to break the lease. I could have sworn there was a, an orange sticker on our door as well. Do you have something other than this? Because you gave me this. No, that's All it. Right. He didn't condemn your apartment. So now you decide you don't want to live there anymore and you are suing him for all this money and your defense is they broke the lease and I, by the way, how much of a security deposit do you have? 
I have a copy of the 650. If she has a copy of the 350, I just don't have it. So the reason that you are keeping it is because of rent, correct? Yes, because okay. they broke the lease. You paid rent in April and in May, correct? Yes. So the issue is, am I going to force you to pay back the rent from two months where they actually lived there, all of the oil, fuel, and electric that they actually used, and their uh, U-Haul cleaning supplies, Home Depot, and lost wages? And the answer to that would be no. Uh, you guys broke the lease. Your place wasn't even condemned. Um, so I find that the landlord is entitled to keep the $950 of security deposit for um, your breach of the lease. That is my judgment. Good luck, folks. Thank you, Your Honor. So the defendant prevails. Tracy Turner and Stephen Knox are on their way out of the courtroom. You know, this is a case that really should not even have been brought to court. You claim that the, the building inspector condemned your apartment and then the judge saw flat out it was not condemned. Well, the fact of the matter was that everything was unsafe. There was safety issues in the basement uh, that could have potentially been hazardous. You didn't have enough ammunition to really prove your case here in court. You realize that? You understand that? Uh, I guess now? not. And you read it wrong. It wasn't condemned. That's really kind of surprising. Sorry about that. All right. Thank you very okay, much. Okay. Officer McIntosh has some documents you have to sign. Here comes Mr. Benita. So how do you feel about this? You I, satisfied? I'm very satisfied. You I should. Could, could put it to rest, put it behind me, and... Uh, Keep forward. Okay, Keep good forward. luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. You two have to sign some documents. Harvey, what do you think? So here's the deal. If you break your lease, uh, you have to prove there is a fundamental problem with the unit, and that was not the case here. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.